My name is Julia and I'm 17, but for now, let's forget about it. Imagine a 10 years old girl playing the piano for her little two years old sister. And the only light from the warm fireplace is making the piano keys visible for my fingers to flow through white and black boards, creating the sounds from Carol of the Bells. And after two hours of constant crying, the younger sister finally falls asleep. I remember since then how shocked I was every time I succeeded in getting my sister to bed just by playing that exact Christmas song. Uh, you may think that's a normal thing for a lot of children, but I was doing all my best not to believe into magic and mystery after she almost immediately went to sleep for a few times in a row. I must admit that she enjoyed listening to other compositions, like the lullabies, but she rarely got to bed with those melodies in the air. When I was attending music school, I was thinking about any theories for the eight years I was there. I asked my teachers, tried to perform different songs at home, researched a lot of psychology papers, and all of that was done to find out my sister's behavior. And of course, we can't forget, Carol of the Bells was still a frequent visitor in our house. Once, I was going to leave home for a couple of days. And to prevent my mom from the eternally hard work of singing lullabies to my sister, I decided to teach her how to play my sister's favorite song. My mom is definitely not a musician and I'm not a professor. Uh, but after long, long hours of studying and teaching, my mom finally got a deal with the instrument. What do you think? Did our plan work? The answer is no. And this situation fueled the flame even more, as I couldn't explain it simply as favorite song. There was something more I couldn't see, and I challenged myself to eventually find it out. Shortly, this eventually find it out revealed itself seven years after my endless trials to solve the mystery, but I, of course, forgot about that. Many things have changed since the previous scene decorations. I was, in the, I was in the 11th grade, had a lot of stuff to do, but still kept playing the guitar for my little brother. He once said, I don't want dad to play me a song, you should do that. Those words dent into my head, and I, for the first time, felt that I was on the finish line of my little investigation. Everything turned out in the way that my siblings and I probably develop a language, a music language, a code between each other. They didn't feel the technique of performing, and I think that song didn't play a role. Everything depended on my emotions and how my brother and I connected each other's thoughts and feelings into one bubble created by melody, by music. These cognitive feelings became the same for both of us. It's worth saying that I'm not the only one who discovered the comparative characteristics between music and language. By the way, has somebody here ever heard about music linguistics? Bruno Nadel, musicologist and ethnomusicologist from Czechia originally, wrote a whole paper, Some Linguistic Approaches to Musical Analysis, which helped me realize that music does speak, and we truly can compare language structures and music. Do you think it is essential for musicologists? By analyzing composition like text, for example, they would explain some phenomena in music performances they couldn't do before. Some scientists went further and stated that music and language actually have the same systems. They are both sounds, they use human's voice to be created, require some internal information to use it freely, and both affect people, emotionally or cognitively, making music and language sounds that survive through the ages of inarticulate moans. That leads us to conclude that our cognitive process while speaking and playing musical instruments is remarkably similar. Every note, C, D, E, or any notes you know, have their own grammar, sentences, chords, texts, compositions, and the most important, ways to not only speak to others and share your experience, but also dive into the world of your audience and explore the universe of infinite opportunities. So for now, Thank you.